Okay, in this video, we're going to go over how to solve linear inequalities. And I was originally going to show you how to write your final answer just using interval notation, but then it occurred to me that it might be a better idea to also show how, what it looks like graphically and what it looks like in regular notation. And I'll explain that when we actually get to that point, okay? So here's our first inequality that we would like to solve. So x minus 4 is greater than 2 over 5. Now I chose these fractions specifically because I want to show you a technique called multiplying by 1. And multiply by 1 to clear fractions. In other words, to make, your, uh, to make your problem not have any fractions in it. And this is particularly useful for when you start having like rational, uh, rational equations and polynomial fractions and that sort of thing. Now the first thing I see is that I notice that there are three denominators here that we are dealing with, 1, 1, and 5. And we want to clear those fractions. And <clears throat> when my denominator is the same in each one of these, I can go ahead and just cross them all out, right? So how am I going to make this a denominator of 5 and not change the proportion of the problem? I'm going to multiply by 1. And the 1 that I'm going to multiply by is 5 over 5. Okay? And I'm going to do the exact same thing with this particular term. Okay? 5 over 5. Once I've done that, look what happens. I'm going to rewrite this. Let me just change my colors here again. I'm going to rewrite this to 5x over 5 minus... 20 over 5 is greater than 2 over 5. Now all my denominators are exactly the same, so I get to cross them out. And now I've got a problem that is much simpler to look at. 5x minus 20 is greater than 2. Okay? And that's a lot, like I said, a lot easier for most of us to deal with when we're dealing with whole numbers. I'm going to solve this regularly. I'm going to add 20 to both sides. I'm going to get 5x is greater than 22, and then finally divide both sides by 5. x is greater than 22 over 5. Now that would be just regular notation, okay? If I wanted to do this graphically, what I would do is I would create a number line. Always put in your zero so you have a reference point for positives and negative numbers. Find a point, uh, 22 over 5 is about 5 and 2 fifths, I believe, right? Uh, 4 and 2 fifths? It, it doesn't really make any difference, quite honestly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to this side of the equation. I'm going to put an open circle because this is a greater than sign, not any, no equal sign. I'm going to mark it as 22 over 5, leave it as a fraction, and I'm going to follow the direction of the arrow. Now this is what it would look like in graphic notation. Okay? And then finally, interval notation will look something like this. And remember, with interval notation, you're always going to read just the graph itself going left to right. Now, at left, the lower limit is at 22 over 5. And you put a comma. The upper right-hand limit is at positive infinity, isn't it? Now I have to decide whether I'm going to use parentheses or brackets. Parentheses, remember, are used when you don't have an exact stop or an exact equal to 22.5. So here's, for example, it approaches 22.5 but doesn't quite ever get there. And the same thing with infinity. It doesn't really land on any particular number. So the answer to this particular one using interval notation is parentheses 22 over 5 comma positive infinity uh, parentheses. Okay? Now let's do the second example. I have uh, 3, no excuse me, I have x is greater than, I've got 3x is greater than uh, x minus 2. Now in this problem, notice that I've got x's on both sides. So I really want to kind of get them onto the same side. No, I'm sorry, the actual problem is, there we go, because I did want to have a fraction in this one. 3 fourths x is greater than x 
minus 2. Okay? Now again, I've got, I'm noticing, one, two, three different denominators, and the common denominator for all of them is 4, isn't it? So I'm going to multiply this one by 4 over 4, again, which is a 1. doesn't affect the actual x over 1, right? just changes the way it looks. Same thing over here. And once I've done that, look what I have. I now have 3x over 4 is greater than 4x over 4 minus 8 over 4. This inequality is the same or equivalent to the original problem that I had, except that I get to cross out the denominators now because they're proportional, which leaves me with 3x is greater than 4x minus 8. Much easier to, like I said, solve. Let's go ahead and subtract 4x from both sides because we want all the x's on one side. And that's going to give me this. And now I'm going to divide, because I don't want a, a negative variable. I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 1. But remember that when you divide or multiply by a negative, number, you need to flip the direction of your inequality. All right, so now I've got x is less than positive 8. There's my regular notation. There's my graph. Again, I'm going to choose just some number on the positive side. Call it 8. Make sure you label it. Otherwise, these the lack of intervals will make a big difference, and then follow the direction. And again, keep that as an open circle. There's your graphic answer. And the interval notation would be, again, reading left to right, negative infinity, all the way up to 8. And again, leave both of those open. All right. Now, let's do the very last couple of problems in this demonstration. I'm going to have negative x. Let me just write about a piece of paper. There we go. Negative x minus 1 seventh is less than or equal to 1. All right, so let's see what we can do with this one. Again, we want to get the common denominator. It looks like 7 will be the common denominator in all of these. I'm going to multiply this one by 7 over 7. I'm going to multiply this one by 7 over 7. I'm going to rewrite in my next sentence what I call sentences, right? And I'm going to get negative 7x. I can move those around because of the commutative property of multiplication over 7 minus 1 over 7 is less than or equal to 7 over 7. Get to cross them out. I get to rewrite it as negative 7x minus 1 is less than or equal to 7. Again, a lot easier to look at and solve. Let's add 1 to both sides. Negative 7x is less than or equal to 8. Let's divide by negative 7. Remember, that's going to flip the direction of my inequality. x is greater than or equal to a negative 8 sevenths. Here's my regular notation. Here's my graphic notation. Now I'm on the negative side. I have an equal sign, so I'm going to fill it in. Remember, you have to label it follow the direction of the arrow. My interval notation, therefore, will be far left is negative 8 sevenths, far right positive infinity. Since it's equal to, I'm going to use now a bracket, and since it's a, an infinity and it doesn't land on any one spot, you use the parentheses. Okay, we're almost finished. I'm going to have one more example for you. 
x plus 6 is less than or equal to 2x minus 5. <clears throat> Let's get all the x's on one side. Notice I don't have any fractions here, so I don't have to multiply by any kind of 1. So let's get the x's on one side. Let's do this. And since I like x's on the left side, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. That's going to give me negative x plus 6 is less than or equal to a negative 5. Let's subtract 6 from both sides. That's going to give me negative x is less than or equal to negative 11. And let's divide by negative 1. So we can get positive over here, flip the direction of my inequality, make it positive 11. Much easier answer. That's the regular notation. My graphic notation would be, I would just go up to some number, call that 11. Since it's equal, I'm going to fill it in, follow the direction. Again, remember, label it. There's my graphic representation, 11 on the left side positive infinity on the right side equals to, so I'm going to put a bracket, infinity always has that. Now the way you check each one of these problems is to just choose a number in that shaded area, right? So I'm going to choose something like 12, go back up here, plug it in, 12 plus 6 is 18, 2 times 12 is 24 minus 5 is 19, is 18 less than or equal to 19? It is. The shaded area is correct. Do the exact same thing with all of these down here, with all the other examples that we did, and you should be okay. Okay, long explanation. I hope that helped.